So in this video, I'm gonna compare drawing with pencil and paper to drawing with the Remarkable Paper Tablet to drawing with an iPad. I'm gonna draw the same thing three times to hopefully make it fair, and then I'm gonna draw a different thing three times in the reverse order. So hopefully that eliminates me just getting kind of practiced at drawing the same thing. And I'm gonna let you know what I think of each method. And at any point in the video, let me know in the comments which one you prefer the look of. And if you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up, that is a real help. So my first drawing is with pencil, and I'm really used to using these pencils. I'm gonna work through a tonal range using my 4B and then switching to my 9B pencil. In my opinion, HB pencil has no place in drawing. Always make sure you're sketching with soft pencil. I have been drawing with pencil for many, many years and it's something that now comes so natural to me, I'm just used to the way it feels on the paper. I'm not the very, very best at sketching. But I know a good range of techniques, I've got some good training behind me and I've got enough experience to know how to make something look like I really want it to look. This is the first drawing of the bunch, this is the first drawing of the six I'm going to do in this video. And it's probably the worst, you can see it as just being the warm up really. I'm gonna do a drawing on nice cartridge paper with my pencils and then on the Remarkable and then the same drawing again on the iPad. But because in any sketching session you tend to relax and you tend to get a bit better as you go through, I'm gonna then do iPad and then the Remarkable and then pencil and paper last. So hopefully that makes it a bit fair. Hopefully it's going to lead to a really fun comparison for you guys. And I must say I did enjoy drawing this. This is a sketch of apparently a self-portrait of Sandro Botticelli. And um, I wasn't really pleased with this first rendition. But this is something, if it's definitely not broke, don't fix it. I love drawing with pencil and paper. But there are some limitations to it. And one thing I missed was an undo button. So here it is, it's pretty much finished now. I limited myself to just a short period of time, just six minutes for each sketch, so that it was fair and so that it didn't take ages. Let me know what you think of this sketch number one. So now firing on to the Remarkable and straight away you can see the number of times I hit that undo button. Coming from pencil and paper, it's so useful just to be able to get rid of a stroke that you didn't really like instantly without having to reach for another tool, without having to reach for rubber, and in any case, you are gonna leave some marks even if you rub out a line. Now, I wasn't really pleased with this sketch and how this one turned out, so let me know what you think of this one in the comments as well. I don't know what it is, maybe just the switch between the pencil and paper to the Remarkable was a bit jarring. But I normally find, drawing on this remarkable gadget, I normally find it amazing. I normally find the tilt and the sketch and the different kind of variations that you get with this pencil tool, I normally find it so close to the natural way that I sketch with pencil. I just found it really difficult to get right this time. And I don't know why that is. I mean, it's not a drawing tablet. It's designed to be basically an e-reader with some note-taking capabilities but they have taken the time to get the experience as close to pencil and paper as they possibly can. And I think they've done a really good job with the limited tool set that they give you. And you can make some really nice marks and you can use this, you can pick this up and feel like you're not really learning a new skill, but you are using something pretty close to a pencil on paper. So I haven't used any of the layer effects and I haven't used any of the other tools to give you that more depth really. I have tried my best to use the tonal range of the pencil you don't have as many pressure levels as you do with other devices and drawing tablets. You don't have the 8,000 or so pressure levels that you have with a good drawing tablet. In fact, you're limited to just about 1,000, but you still get a good range of pressure, a good tonal range. And the tilt function is actually really, really good. Importantly, the friction of the marker on the screen actually feels like paper, and I feel like that is actually worth something. Now, I do think they actually look better on the e-ink screen, I think because it's got that kind of mid-gray background. You can, with a Remarkable, export to SVG and then edit in something like Illustrator. And so more on that in the future. 
but here's the exported PNG on the left and Botticelli on the right. I haven't used the iPad enough yet to really feel comfortable on how it works for drawing. I'm using a bit of software here called Adobe Fresco and straight away I was shocked by how much pressure I needed to actually use to, to make a mark on the paper. But once I did get to grip with the pressure levels, you are able to make a really nice tonal range with each pen tool. And I think incidentally for the purposes of this video, I've stuck with just one tool. I think I'm using the Conte crayon here in Adobe Fresco. And I'm not gonna use color because that is an obvious massive advantage of the iPad. And I think for digital art, I think the iPad is going to beat out the remarkable purely because it's a full color screen. But I wanted to just compare the actual drawing experience and how comfortable I felt drawing on this iPad. I am also using a paper-like screen protector, so it does give you that slight tactile feeling, but it's nowhere near as nice a feeling as the remarkable is for drawing on. Now I am really not happy with the way this turned out, but however, I felt like I was starting to enjoy it once I got about to this point in the sketch. I was starting to get to grips with the way the Apple Pencil felt in the hand, I was starting to get to grips with the lines, and I just felt like, well, this drawing was just gonna go nowhere. So actually, out of all of the Botticelli copies, this was my least favorite, but I was not not enjoying the iPad the least, if that makes sense. I just felt like this was one that I wanted just to stop and start again and start with something new. So here's the finished sketch after six minutes and let me know what you think. This is not my favorite of the Botticelli ones. So in the interest of fairness, I'm switching to a different drawing. I'm gonna do something by Goya. It's a self-portrait of Goya. And I'm gonna work back through the devices and to the pencil and paper. I'm still using Adobe Fresco here, but I've switched to just, I think the soft graphite pencil and I haven't really made many changes to the tools. I think you can make them more sensitive. I think you can change the flow rate, you know, maybe you can change the sensitivity of the pencil itself. I don't know, maybe I just need to play about and get more used to it. But I actually felt like I was pressing so hard that my hand wasn't feeling comfortable anymore. Let me know if that's something that I'm getting wrong. Maybe I should change the sensitivity of the pencil. Do you have any experience with that? Do you find that you have to put undue pressure on the Apple Pencil compared to other drawing tablets or even just pencil and paper? This one did turn out better, I think. I felt a lot more comfortable using it. I felt a lot more like I knew what I was doing on the second go around with the iPad. So I'm a lot happier with this. You can see the comparison in a moment. I think the range of different digital tools and the customization that you can get in Adobe Fresco and the fact that you can download loads of different drawing apps make the iPad a really compelling tool for digital artists. I'll be entirely honest with you, I am not a massive fan of Apple, but since using this iPad more and more, I am really quite enjoying it. And I think the more I use it, the higher up the learning curve I'm getting and the more comfortable I am, and then the more I'm enjoying it. So let me know what you think of the second iPad drawing and the first of this copy of the Goya self-portrait. So back to the Remarkable and back to a bit more of the comfort zone because I'm really starting to enjoy drawing on this device. But once again, I felt like I was a bit limited. I think coming from the iPad to this, I was feeling limited by that tonal range all of a sudden. 
I did enjoy once again having, you know, not to press quite as hard, quite as firmly to get the marks that I wanted. But I think you can see that I'm missing the kind of depth of tonal range that you get maybe with those extra layers of pressure sensitivity. I really thought that the thousand pressure levels that you got with the Remarkable was enough for digital art. And I really have always thought that drawing tablets have a ridiculous number of pressure levels. You know, a professional drawing tablet has 8,000 pressure levels. Surely that's way more than you need, but I think actually what that does give you is not just more tones you can create, but more control over those tones. But there is no denying that Remarkable have made a really good tool here. I'm just looking forward to them making perhaps a device which is geared towards artists. Because the Remarkable is so light and it's such a pleasure to use, the feel of that pencil, that Remarkable marker on the screen, is so light pencil and paper that it's so natural that I could really see this as just being my standard sketchbook that I carried around. But I think before it beats the iPad and before it beats straight up pencil and paper, it does need to have a little bit more functionality. But yeah, there's no denying that this is a better drawing than the first drawing with the Remarkable in this test. I think that's more about me and I'm getting warmed up as I'm sitting down and getting more used to doing the right amount of work in those six minutes that I've allotted myself. And therefore I think I'm getting better at drawing these. But please do comment below and let me know what you think of the second Remarkable drawing and the second Goya self-portrait copy. So for the final drawing, I did the most frustrating thing that you can do when making videos, which is forget to press record. So this was actually my final, my sixth drawing in this test. This was my final pencil and paper copy of the Goya. So I battled that frustration and I didn't give up and I did record one more time. So this is kind of a bit of a cheat because this is the seventh drawing that I've done in the whole thing. So now this is the fourth time that I've copied this sketch. So I'm starting to really get to know the sketch and you can see I'm much more natural with the things I'm drawing, but I'm also much more natural with the pencil and paper in my hand. It's just something that I feel I can work so much faster with than any of the digital devices. And I'm starting to think that none of them are really gonna replace pencil and paper for me. So what's my conclusion gonna be here? That actually we should stop trying to get closer to pencil and paper and just re-embrace pencil and paper. Perhaps there are those digital devices that you can attach to your ordinary pencil and paper and you can digitize them in that way. Perhaps as I did a long time ago, I should go back to scanning pencil and paper drawings and coloring them on Photoshop afterwards. There are loads of options, but in fact, I enjoy drawing on all three of these devices. But please let me know what you thought, which sketches did you like the most, which do you enjoy drawing on the most? Is any digital device ever gonna replace soft pencil and paper? Do you agree with me that the iPad is just going to be the better artist tool because of the color screen? Or do you think that there's actually space enough for all three methods and even more in our digital art vocabulary? So let me know this is the final sketch versus the actual Goya that I copied from. Thanks for watching Good Physics. I enjoyed making this video. I'm really enjoying making some different things at the minute. So subscribe for more content just like this and for GCSE and A Little Physics. Mm -hmm.